Now that we have our project folder created and we have extracted and placed the parts that we need into the proper folder, we need to create an assembly in Omnibus Inventor. An assembly is a collection of various parts uh, put together with whatever constraints you design. Um, now the parts are going to be you know, the wheels, the steel pieces, and we will assemble them in our assembly. So I'm going to click assembly from here. Now, if you didn't have this welcome screen, you could also get to it from the new button up here under get started. Um, we need to make sure it is a standard assembly. Now the assemblies are down here. You can see the icon. Uh, parts are represented by single yellow cubes and assemblies of the parts are represented by multiple cubes. Uh, they mix the yellow with the blue. So a standard assembly. I'm going to click create. Now this may take a moment. Uh, the first time you've opened up Inventor, uh, you're creating your first file. So just be patient and give it a few seconds. Here's my first assembly. By default, they just call it assembly one. We'll change that whenever we first save. To begin, we need to place some parts. Now, going back to our assembly instructions, you can see that we begin the base frame by play, grabbing a couple of U channels and connecting them with this uh, special piece of angle that has these cutouts here. We then will uh, use these four post connectors, one on each side, to uh, make the connection rather simple by using only one bolt and one nut. To do this in Autodesk Inventor, we make sure that we see the assembly or the assemble ribbon, which is default when you start a new assembly, and we need to place objects. Now, if you click the arrow at the bottom, you can choose where you are picking objects from. Uh, but we want what should be the default, the top place one, um, which you normally can get just by clicking the button itself on the top. Now it will bring up our project file and the parts are organized uh, basically by what function they serve. If you look in the structure folder, you will see the C channel, uh, that chassis crossbar, the nuts, the bolts. If you look in the motion folder, you will find things like gears, uh, the shafts, spacers, the wheels. We need the U channel which is in the structure folder. So I will select it and you can double click on it or you can just click once and click open. And that will bring a piece in. Now it's a little large, it's zoomed in, but I just uh, left click to place it, place one copy. And if I need a second copy, I can just move to a slightly different location, click again for the second copy. And then when I am done, I right click and I click OK. Now I have two copies. Now my view just zoomed out. Uh, I was using the scroll wheel on the mouse. I highly recommend you use a mouse when working with Autodesk Inventor. Using the touchpad on the laptop can be done. It's just more difficult to zoom in, zoom out, and uh, manipulate the pieces. If you do want to use the laptop keyboard and touch mouse, you really should uh, familiarize yourself with using the F2, F3, F4, and 5 keys for manipulating the views, zooming in and out. Now, I know you have some experience with Inventor uh, from doing sketches and making some parts. Uh, you should be used to the view cube up here, changing your views. Uh, all right, how you can hit home, you can rotate. Now, both these parts are free to move within our 3D space. We would probably be better served if one of them were locked in place and wouldn't move around. Now, older versions of Autodesk Inventor, if you happen to use them, used to do this automatically by default. But for us, we need to pick one of those and ground it. To do so, just have your uh, mouse pointer over top of it, right click, and in the list of options, you will find grounded. Select it. That part will not move around if you try to move it. 
This one still will, but this one won't. Now, you may be wondering what the heck all those round little icons are that are popping up when I click on it, all right? Now, it looks rather confusing, and I admit there are quite a lot of them on this part. Those are something that Autodesk Inventor uses to make assembling pieces a little more easy. They are called iMates. Now, to understand what an iMate is, you need to understand what constraints are. Constraints are how you assemble pieces. Right here in the assembly tab, uh, if I click on the constraint, constraint icon, you'll see the different types of constraints we can place. They are basically mate constraints. Picture down here tries to represent what they do. Um, a mate constraint is used to primarily put flat surfaces against one another. This would mate them facing, and this would align them so that they were flush. The red arrows coming off the face of the object, you can see here on the object, I see a little faint gray arrow. It's a normal vector. It faces away from the face. In fact, if I leave my cursor still, uh, you can see it will allow me to select that a normal from that face, uh, normal from the other face that's also behind the mouse. There's some edges near the mouse, pointer. There's all kinds of objects that we can select. Uh, now you can also use mate on center lines for uh, axles, which we'll do so later. Uh, the second constraint is an angle constraint. You can define that two things always maintain the same angle. We'll be using that. There's a tangent constraint for curved surfaces. Uh, insert is one of the more common ones we're going to use. An insert is technically does a couple things at once. It lines up the centers of objects. For instance, if you were going to put a bolt in a hole, it lines up the centers. And then it also defines how far you push the bolt into the hole. It essentially mates one surface to another while lining up two centers. And then you can choose the orientation, whether something is sticking into the hole or out of the hole. Uh, this is a symmetry constraint. Uh, you can also get into motion constraints. We'll use a few of those. Uh, translational constraints, if you need to uh, simulate how things move. Then you can also do different constraint sets. We will focus primarily on uh, assemblies, constraints and motion constraints. Okay, so what the heck are these little iMates that are showing up, these dots? Essentially, they're half of a constraint that's already been defined. So if I want to constrain two pieces together, I can just tell it which two iMates to join. And as long as they're the same type of iMate, it'll match them up very quickly. We will use these some of the time when they're appropriate, but we won't use them all the time. Now I will warn you, you can see I've zoomed in and the iMates have kind of cleared out. That's the biggest sticky point with iMates. When there are a lot of them, because this part has so many holes, it's very confusing which one you need. So zooming in really alleviates that confusion. Now here I'll select this iMate and you can see it actually isn't even on the top surface. That's one from the back surface. You see that blue circle? That is an iMate that is part of an insert constraint on the inside of that back edge. If I zoom to a different one right here. Oops, excuse me, I clicked the wrong button. If I go to this one, that's an iMate on the bottom edge. And this is an insert iMate on the top edge. Okay, well, let's just show you how to use them. I have my two cross pieces, or sorry, my two U channels. I need one of the cross pieces. So let me bring in a chassis crossbar. Uh, change my view here a little bit. So one thing, it might help to arrange this so that it looks like the picture. Oh, I also want to show you, you're in a 3D space looking at things at angles. It's not always what you think the view looks like. Here's an end view. These aren't at the same height. Yet when I was looking like this, I couldn't really tell. It looked like one was just forward from the other. From the side, 
file, they're also not side by side. So it can get a little confusing. Uh, to make things match what I see in the instructions, I want this to be my normal view. So on the view box, once I have it, I'm going to right click. I'm going to set current view as home, fit to view, so that it zooms. You know, if I go off this view and I click the home button, it zooms back to that view. And if I'm zoomed out, it brings me back. This is useful because a simple slip of the finger and all of a sudden you have, might not know where you are. You try to click things, weird things happen. Hit the home button, brings you back to home. The other thing, this, which says it's right on the view cube, is going to be my front view. So I will set to that to current view as front, just so I have a reference that I'm used to. Taking a close look at the instructions, I can see that the cross piece needs to be assembled to the one U channel by the fourth hole in the middle. Now it often helps to uh, look closely at the instructions so you can tell exactly where the parts go. So to do that, I'm just going to drag the pieces apart a little bit, the ones that can move. Remember I grounded this one, it does not move. I'm going to bring this piece in here, and I realize it's not turned the right way. Uh, you can do that if you want to. You can turn it, uh, but you don't have to. If you want to move it, I'm going to click up here on Free Rotate. I'm going to click on that part, and it might be a little confusing because the Free Rotate does some weird motions, but you can get it close to the way it's supposed to be. Again, you don't have to do this but it does help. Now, do I have this turned the right way? Well, quick tab back to the instructions. Shows me I don't. I need it turned the other way. So, um, if I just want that rotation, I'm going to go to top view, go back to rotate, and if I don't click in the middle, which is free rotate, but I click on the outside edge, it fixes it in that plane and just rotates it about the one axis. It's a little easier. Okay, so we've got it relatively close to where it needs to go. And I can see I need this to match up with one, two, three, four. So here's how I do this. I will click on this part. I'll zoom in. Okay, and I can see by this hole I have two eye mates. Now one is on the top, one is on the bottom. I need the bottom one. Now to click it, you have to hold the Alt key, which is on either side of your spacebar. So holding Alt, and then left-clicking on that part, and when you click the eye mate, you can see the uh, blue circle. Now as I move it, it's going to jump all over because it's going to try to match it up with different eye mates. And you'll see, depending on which eye mate I pick, I mean, down here it might try to match it to the side, uh, but I need the correct one, which is right in this area. Now I need to pick the right one. Uh, just move it so you get the right one. I believe that is the correct one. Oh, I lost it. Now, if the eye mates overlap too much and cause problems, change your view angle a little bit. Zoom in a little bit. Most problems with eye mates can be fixed by just changing your view so that other eye mates don't interfere. Now, once I had it in the right spot, I just released my mouse button and it locked into place. Now, I only have it locked into place with one eye mate. Now, an insert eye mate treats it like there's a bolt going through, holding the two things together. This piece will spin and rotate. Now, to hold it in place, I need a second. I don't have to do every one. I just need a second one. So I can pick any of these other eye mate locations that line up and mate them together. So I will try oops, this one right here. I'm going to hold down the Alt key. Select the eye mate and move it around till I get the proper eye mate that matches up. And it is now locked into place. Now the other U channel needs connected to the other side. I'm just going to get it close to the position to where I need it to be. I'm going to zoom in. Might be easier if I change my view a little bit. There we go. 
I am going to try to grab the I made on the bottom of this part. Right there, you can see it's on the bottom. And I want to match it up with the, whoops, it's jumping around on me as I go to select the iMates. Right there, you saw one of the problems. If you pick the wrong iMate, parts may jump around. This part isn't grounded. Let me take it and attach it to the part that is fixed in place. So zoom in a little bit. Here is a divider that says I'm five down. So this is hole number five. I need the top one. Oh, that's on the side. Let's see, is that it? That's on the top. And I need it to attach to the bottom. As you can see, it is often easier to attach a free piece to the parts that are moving. Now, as this is underneath, I may have a hard time getting to the eye mates that are on it. If I try to pick an eye mate that is behind another piece, Autodesk often defaults to a surface on the piece in front of you, like such. I try to pick this eye mate here, and you see a normal vector for the surface my mouse was over. And that's not what we want. A way around that is to go to the free move button and just what free move does is it lets you move a piece that is constrained in place temporarily to get out of free mood just hit the escape button and I'm going to select let's see one uh, that one it is the top one that matches here now if I tried to join it somewhere else it wouldn't let me because it can't possibly made up with that. Now I've connected it, go back to my home view, and I have both sides locked into place. And while they are held into place, I do need to add the four post connectors, the nut and the bolt that we would actually use on the real assembly. Well, in order to use the for post retainer, I need to place it. So I click the place icon under assemble. I will need a four post hex nut retainer. Place that into here. I will also need the proper bolt. I believe it is a star drive, 832 by 0.375. And I will need a 832 hex nut. Now, if you see here, I selected both by holding the control button down while I select it. And I'm going to click open and I can actually insert multiple parts at once. Now to place these, I need to use some iMates and I need to change my view. This makes it easier. I'm going to zoom in near where I need to place that part. Yeah, that looks good. Now this part, let me rotate that part around and show you. It has a number of iMates. It has one on that corner post. It has one for a center line of the hole, one on the top where the nut goes, and one on the bottom for the center hole. Okay, I'm going to press alternate. I'm going to pick this iMate. You can see it, the circle. It's the insert constraint from here. I'm going to place it with this one right there. And if at first you don't succeed, <laughs> give it another shot. There we go. Now that is able to spin and rotate. I need to lock this corner piece in. Alternate, select it, match it up. That is held in place now. Now I need the bolt, I need the nut. The bolt is easiest from this side. Again, I have one for a center line. Now if I zoom in, you can see the icons are a little different, whether it's a center line mate or whether it's an insert constraint. Hold Alt, pick this insert constraint, find the right one that matches with the hole, release my left mouse button, and that bolt is in place. Now it can spin, that's not gonna bother us any though. 
for the nut, I need to go to the bottom side. So let me just change my views a little bit. Get the nut kind of close. Whoops, there we go. Now all this zooming and jumping around I'm doing, again, I'm using the scroll mouse. Just the scroll wheel on the mouse. So. There we go. Things are starting to make a little more sense. Okay. Now on this nut, there's an eye mate here. That's one of the edges. And one here that matches it up. Now, technically, that nut can still rotate. And we don't really want that. So to keep it from rotating and to lock it in place, we need to do an angle constraint. Now, the only flat sides on the nut happen to be on the outside. So for this, we can't use an iMate. We need to go to our Constrain menu. I'm going to select an angle for the type. Now, I'm only going to need a directed angle with two edges. So I pick this solution. Now, I zoom in here, and I need to pick a flat edge. You can see it outlined the plane of the side of the face. I select that. And now I need to have a face that it lines up to. Now, it might make sense to try to use this face or maybe one on the inside, but they aren't purely vertical the way that plastic part was designed, and they will not work for a uh, two-selection angle. All I need is a face that goes along this direction. I am going to pick just the edge of one of these holes right there. And you can see that snapped up the nut so that this line here and this normal vector here always face the same direction. I'll click on OK. And that piece is locked in place. And we have our first four post piece locked in place. Now to add another four post retainer, a bolt and a nut over here, we could just place them again and repeat the procedure. But I want to show you a way to save some time. They often call it your workflow, the way you move through the project to get the work done. Since this is a piece that we're going to be using a few times, and it's going to be exactly the same, we can make it its own assembly. So to do that, I need to select the three pieces that will be together as the assembly. That's the four post retainer, the bolt, and the nut. Now, to select them, you want to hold the control key while you're clicking. That will allow you to select multiple items. And I'm actually going to do it from over here in the model browser because it's much easier. I don't have to change my view. Now that I have all three of these selected, I will right click. And looking through my options, there is a component submenu. And we are going to demote. Now, tab is a shortcut key to do that. But I need to demote them. Now I need to give them a name. I'm going to call this a four post retainer, bolt, and a nut. I want it to be very descriptive of exactly what it is. Try to keep my capitalization the same. And I'm going to pick the location of it. Right now it is just set to be in my claw up folder. That's good. That's all I want. Sometimes it will. Depending on what you've done, it might have it in one of the subfolders. Uh, my preference is to just keep everything out of the subfolders right into your Clawbot project folder. Anyway, I click OK. You might get a warning about you know how it's going to copy some iMate definitions, etc. Just click Yes. And you'll see in the browser now, instead of having three separate parts, you have a single assembly. Uh, the nice thing about assemblies is you can place them inside of other assemblies. And if I expand, I can see the parts that make up that assembly. Now to get this piece over here, I could go back and I could place. And in my V5 Clawbot folder, hmm, I don't see the file where I told it to be created. I think I might know the reason for that. We haven't saved our project yet. So I'm going to go up here to save. Now, the first time you save one, it has the generic name. 
So it will ask me if I want to rename it. It treats it as a save as. Once you change the name uh, or save it the first time, it won't ask you to change the name unless you choose save as. So I'm going to save my file as Evans V5 Clawbot. I'll click save. And it will ask me if I want to save the various parts inside of it. And one of them is indeed that assembly of the retainer, the nut, and the bolt. They are set to save, so I'll click OK. And now, when I go to place, there is the part I was looking for. So it's not actually saved until you save your assembly file. So I will place this right here. And now I need to assemble it to there. Now I only have a couple of I mates. I will take this one from the bolt and try to place it in the proper location. Whoops, that's on the bottom. That's on the top, but not the right hole. Sometimes they get hidden. And what did we say when that happens? Change your zoom factor. Zoom in. Maybe change the angle you're looking at it a little bit so the I mates don't necessarily line up the same way. And now that I did that, I can find the proper location. Now, that's just one. This still rotates. I need to line up a second one. Let me see if we have a second one down here we can use. There it is on that bottom post. So I will rotate it, try to get it in a relatively good position. Hold down the Alt key, select it, and snap it into place. There is my second retainer nut and bolt. Much easier than the first because I used a relatively efficient workflow by creating a sub-assembly.